All right guys, we're back with my 2022 Subaru BRZ and I've now owned this car for a year. So I figured I'd make a video talking about the last year of ownership, discussing some of my favorite mods and talking about the latest modification, which is a set of all-terrain tires. These are Falcon Wild Peak AT Trails in 205 60R16. Same size I was running for my winter setup. They are the smallest all-terrain tire in diameter available. Uh, pretty cool set. They look pretty sharp, very rugged, a little bit more sidewall stiffness and toughness than your standard all season. And uh, these got really, really good reviews on Tire Rack and just other websites. So I've heard really good things about them. So far, driving on them, they feel awesome. So we'll go on the road, get some more driving impressions for you guys. Just had these mounted this week. And uh, yeah, really excited to kind of get some more seat time with this setup. The idea was that if I can get an all-terrain that has a little bit better sidewall stiffness, more structural integrity than a winner, uh, I can run these year-round. They'll tackle Michigan potholes. They'll look sharp. They'll have a bit more ruggedness for dirt roads, rally crosses, and just the conditions that this car is going to be uh, taken through and driven in. I think the BRZ right now has kind of reached its final form. Maybe a couple more tweaks eventually. Wouldn't mind a catted unequal length header someday and a set of upgraded brake pads, but otherwise there isn't a whole lot else I want to do to this car. It's kind of perfect for how I wanted it and how I originally intended it. Uh, I also have a tow hitch that I haven't installed yet, so I want to be able to mount my mountain bike on the back. But guys, this BRZ, still just so fun, so pure, so enjoyable to drive on a regular basis, and uh, safari or lightly safari lifted, with these all terrains, I think this is just, this is gonna be the ticket for uh, the best setup that I kind of envisioned for uh, this car and for myself and for my needs. All right, so let's just kind of go through the list of mods here. First thing I did this car was an M-Tech clutch helper spring. I initially removed the clutch helper spring and I found it to be just a little bit too heavy. The inputs of the clutch pedal didn't quite match the inputs of the rest of the car and the M-Tech feels just about perfect. Still though, I was kind of struggling with smoother starts and smoother shifts with this car. It's just kind of the way the throttle tuning is. It's a bit wonky from the factory. The GR86 and the BRZ, the throttle tuning isn't perfect. And the thing that fixed that was a pedal commander, a um, basically just a throttle controller device. Any of them work. Sprint Brewster makes one, Pedal Commander makes one. There's a bunch of companies out there. Basically all it does is it creates a very linear throttle response and immediate throttle response uh, down by the pedal box. You just plug it in and you can tune it according to different drive modes, settings with your phone via Bluetooth or physically with the little module. And that's actually one of my favorite modifications to this car just because it made drivability so much better. Made a couple little tweaks with brakes, fluid, did a diff and transmission fluid change. Always go with red line for that. That feels about the same as stock, no major changes. And then did the shorter final drive from, I think it was a 2020 BRZ, 430 rear diff instead of a 410 that's in there stock. And that made a nice difference. A little bit shorter gear ratios with that final drive, better acceleration. It's subtle, but I think it's a very worthwhile mod. Get some heat into the car before we start sliding around like a hoon. In the wet, I'm really impressed with the traction from these Falcon Wild Peak AT trails. These tires grip really well for how narrow and skinny they are. And for the tread pattern, they have really, really good initial turn in, mid corner grip, and then the breakaway is very smooth, very progressive. <laughs> and actually, for being on a sports car, they handle great. Big improvement in the dry and the wet from winter tires. And uh, 
they have good sidewall stiffness, so you can get a good response out of these. And that's nice, but it's not too harsh, it's not too stiff. They also soak up bumps really, really well. We've got some huge potholes in Michigan right now, especially with all the freeze-thaw cycles, the rain, the wetness. It's all a little bit unpredictable as to what you're gonna run over. And uh, these tires soak up everything beautifully. Well, it's a potholes up here, and I'll show you guys what that's like. So going back, talking about that rear diff, kind of an expensive mod, about six, seven hundred dollars purchased on eBay used, and uh, about three hundred bucks to get it installed. You can always do it in your driveway, but again, it's kind of a, a bear to tackle solo. I like this mod a lot. Something that I did to my previous BRZ, my 2014, and I think if you want just a little bit extra power and a little bit more driving fun, it makes this car a bit more fun to drive on a regular basis because you're shifting through the gears just a bit more. I've always felt that the BRZ G86 with the 410s from the factory, the gears are just a little bit long and this lets you enjoy the six-speed manual just that much more and you get more power all the time with it. The best handling mod for these cars is just a little bit of negative camber up front from the factory. They understeer pretty heavily. Uh, I have about 1.4 degrees of negative camber in the front of this BRZ. You could go a little bit more. You just get a set of uh, alignment bolts. Tire rack sells them. You can get them elsewhere too, uh, but it's just a really easy solution. Install them, go get an alignment, ask the alignment tech to max out your negative camber up front, and you can get anywhere between one to two degrees uh, with the factory struts. Yeah, look at this, kind of a slick surface here. Yeah, I mean, geez, this is, this is pretty grippy. <laughs> wow. And then of course, we have the MRT Street Touring Exhaust, which I think for my purposes, my wants, is just about perfect. A little bit louder than factory, zero drone on the highway. You fold the rear seats down and it gets a little bit boomy, but with everything up, it still allows you to hear engine noise at high revs and at lower RPMs, you get some more pops, burbles, and uh, just kind of sounds more aggressive. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the WRX exhaust. It's really nice and low at low RPMs, and then at high revs, it kind of just envelops the cabin and adds a little bit more of a sporty tone to this car, which it definitely needed from the factory. I think someday paired with a catted unequal length header, this exhaust setup will be perfect. We're on all-terrain tires, meant for like trucks and SUVs, <laughs> and a sports car. They just handle great. <laughs> uh, I can't believe it. All right, let's go find some more interesting roads, and we'll see how this car performs around some corners and uh, slides around a bit. This BRZ has been so much fun. I talked a little bit about this when I did my reveal video, my intro video on this car. And uh, I, was, I was considering so many other different sports cars. I was looking at Vipers. I was looking at RS3s. I was looking at BMW M2s, Tesla Model 3 Performance. Uh, a lot of stuff, basically just everything was at least double the price of this. And I think for what was at the time a one car solution, this is the most fun option I could have bought at pretty much any price. <laughs> you 
these tires are amazing in the wet. Not as grippy, of course, as the Michelin Pilot Sport All Season 4 All Season setup that I have, but they're also just so comfortable and forgiving over potholes. This is a pretty bumpy section of road here, and it really reduces impact noise. NVH over big bumps is virtually non-existent here. This is awesome. about these all trains is that when you're trying to be a little bit ridiculous they let you do it but if you're not they don't catch you out they don't surprise you there's no uh, pucker factor if you're just driving around normally with these tires like there can be on a set of winter tires in the wet these are also uh, three peak snow winter rated tires so we'll see how they do someday in the snow next season Probably not a complete replacement or viable alternative to a dedicated winter tire, but uh, for what we've seen here in Michigan in the winter, they might they might get us through. We'll see. I've had very light snow the last couple years in southeast Michigan. So much fun. This is the perfect car for me. I, it's just, it just does everything I want. It does everything I need. It satisfies all the little dopamine hit requirements that I like out of a sports car. It's not too fast. I can enjoy it on the street within reasonable legal speeds. It rides well on Michigan roads. There are some sports cars you just can't enjoy here in Michigan because the roads are so bad. And this. BRZ has just always been so nice and soft from the factory. And I think if you have better roads, you should probably go for a GR86 for just that extra sharpness and sporty feel, but this is just, it's my flavor. Consumables are cheap. It doesn't wear through tires and brakes like some vehicles do. And when you need to replace them, they're not that expensive to replace. It's just kind of got all the right bits and it's the right formula. There are a few things I don't like about this new car. I feel like the steering feel could be a little bit better, but I do like how light it is. I think the previous gen cars were a little bit too heavy and kind of, as a result, made the cars feel a little bit more cumbersome and less flickable and chuckable. Uh, kind of, it's more Miata-like now, at least, in terms of steering feel and, and the weight of the car, how it kind of rotates around you and turns in, etc. And I wish they kept the larger trunk opening in this new gen BRZ. GR86. It's kind of a bummer that I can't fit a mountain bike back there as easily anymore, but the complaints that I have with this car are pretty few and far between. A couple little annoying rattles. I've had one from the seat belt area that's kind of intermittent. And same with this area down here in the dash. There's always kind of been a little bit of a, a creak shake in this area, even with the old uh, previous gen cars. But again, with a warranty, that's stuff that usually the dealer can address and fix if you complain about it enough. CarPlay has kind of gone in and out for me on a pretty regular basis. I hear there is an update from Subaru 
uh, that came out pretty recently that fixes all of that with all the systems. So hopefully that's the case. Next time I take this in for an oil change at the dealer, that's probably what I'll opt for. Otherwise, you know, you guys are always asking what's the most fun car for X price. I think this is the most fun car under sixty, seventy thousand dollars I really do. I mean, there are other cars that are way more capable, way more impressive, way faster. This and the Miata keep it simple. They keep it lightweight. They are true to form and pure in their intentions. A lot of cars have gotten rid of their handbrakes. A lot of cars don't have limited slip differentials. A lot of cars have too much power, too wide of a tire to kind of slide around and push the limits, at least on the street. Some cars are a little bit scary to drive at the limit, or those limits are just too high. And I say that the BRZ G86 just kind of gets it all right. And in a package that a lot of people can fit in, you can fit tall drivers in these cars. Um, it's a practical vehicle. You can throw stuff in the trunk. You can fold it down, pull down those rear seats. It just kind of does everything. And I think that's probably just why I love driving these cars so much. Oh, and there's that too, but you guys already knew that. Of course, I'm biased, but when I went into this purchase, when I found one of these BRZs at a dealer, someone canceled their order, the dealer was selling it at MSRP, and uh, I thought, you know, we'll see. If I like it, great. If not, I'll just, I'll get something a little bit faster. I was really, really close to pulling the trigger on a Camaro SS1 LE. And that would still be a fantastic car if I didn't enjoy this one so much. But honestly, I thought I was kind of over the whole BRZ thing with my last car. But this new car is so much better in so many ways that I feel like I'm enjoying it in more ways. And I've modified it a little bit differently in the sense that, you know, this is now a bit more of a capable dirt road, off-road vehicle. And getting back into rallycross has been really exciting with this car too. I haven't done a ton of events yet, but the two that I have done have been a really, really good time. And we've got a dirt driving event that I can attend hopefully later this weekend. So we'll just kind of go from there. All right. We're gonna get this thing nice and dirty now because it is wet and it is dirty. See how well those mud flaps work. So first impressions, not a lot of grip out here, kind of greasy in the mud. Feels pretty stable, feels pretty solid. ABS is doing its job. These tires have really good traction. This is impressive. They just kind of make everything feel about the same. <laughs> like a winter tire does, but much, much higher grip limits. some bumps, some potholes. We've got some coming up here. Doesn't seem too phased. Yeah, it is not pleasant out on these roads today. This is pretty, uh, sketchy conditions and there is just so much traction here. Wow, that is impressive. Let's talk about wheels for a minute. Had a lot of different sets for this car so far. I've uh, bought a few, I've sold a few. 
Right now I'm running these Braid Full Race A wheels. They are 16 by seven, 35 millimeter offset, uh, painted in rally white. They look really sharp. I think they kind of bring the aesthetics of this car all together. And they're super strong. That was kind of the goal, was to get a uh, kind of a rally racing oriented wheel. They actually use these for uh, WRX fitment pretty commonly in rally racing. And uh, with this setup, there's no rubbing. The wheel and tire actually fit in the spare tire well, so you can stack four wheels and tires, uh, mounted of course, in the back of this BRZ. So if you're going to an event, a track day, a rally cross, you need to switch up tires in between uh, sessions, you can do that, which is awesome. And of course, last but not least, gotta talk about the lift, the Anderson Design and Fabrication Lift. Really like this lift because it maintains stock geometry and um, I still need to go get an alignment, but uh, that's next on the list. But it still handles really well. You feel maybe, maybe I can feel the slightly higher center of gravity. There is some more float over larger bumps at higher speeds, but that's all the difference I can tell. There's no more understeer. The handling balance is still maintained. I could still take this car to the track, no problem. And uh, I'm really impressed with how well it drives on the street in the snow, on dirt, over rougher roads. It drives well everywhere, and that was the goal. I thought about getting a set of rally coilovers at one point. Not really thinking about that anymore just because the stock suspension setup with the lift works so well. Here in Michigan, I really felt like I could use some of the extra ground clearance, especially in the winter time, but the rest of the year, it just gives me a lot of confidence to kind of drive and use this car however I want. Uh, I don't feel as nervous about taking it on a dirt road, going on a little adventure, little side quests here and there in the BRZ. It just makes the car more enjoyable, more fun, and I absolutely have loved rally crossing this thing. Uh, so this gives me a lot more ability to do that without bashing up the car, or scuffing up the front bumper. Um, and you know, you can take it out on some dirt roads here and there. You're not as nervous going into a dirt parking lot, uh, you know, maybe some areas that aren't quite well maintained. And of course we have so many potholes, steep driveways. The roads out here are an absolute mess. And this is just a bit more of a safety net too. So, and that, that kind of goes into one of the reasons why I enjoy this car so much is that you just kind of feel free to drive this car to your heart's content in the way that you want. Because it's not a $50,000, $60,000 vehicle, I don't feel as bad taking this down some dirt roads, uh, taking it out to the racetrack, and driving it and enjoying it how I want to. And, uh, you know, it's not like it's the super ultra rare expensive thing anymore. It's lightweight, fun, affordable. And I feel like I can really enjoy it a little bit more because of that. That's a pretty good initial drive on this setup and a good discussion on what this car has been like to own and live with for the last year. I really love this thing. It has been so much fun. It's a perfect complement to the Type R in the garage. A few modifications, you can kind of tune it and make it what you want and uh, that's what we've done here and hopefully you guys can kind of uh, make your BRZ and GR86s out there uh, kind of according to how you use them and, and what you want out of them. So it's great to be able to see how versatile the car is as a platform and uh, just how much fun you can have with this car in a lot of different scenarios. All right, so that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll walk you around to see how dirty it got. <laughs> Looks pretty good actually with a bit of mud slung up the side. Oh yeah, proper, proper rally car. I love it. <laughs> Really impressed with these Falcon Wild Peak AT trails. Uh, we'll pretty much keep this set up on the car year round, I think. And if we need a dedicated winner, we'll address that next year with the uh, Michelin X-Ice tires. But for now, 
I really think I'm going to be just swapping out tires to do races, rally crosses, tarmac events, maybe even a track day. And it's great to see that this car can kind of do it all, but uh, this is going to be the daily setup because this just drives so, so well. Okay, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Well, the great thing about this setup too on the highway at speed only throws your speedo off by one mile per hour so it's an inch larger tire in diameter only affects it by like one mile an hour one and a half miles per hour it's pretty minimal even though it's like a four percent difference in tire size zero rubbing with this uh, one and a half inch lift I have tied my front mud flaps back even further from the stock bracket, so I've got rid of those metal brackets that kind of push the mud flap out on the inside. I uh, just kind of zip tied them back to a mounting point. But otherwise, didn't have to modify the fenders at all. This all just fits, and it even fits way better without a lift too. Uh, this tire size is pretty much a plug and play, so that's really nice to have. Uh, just the clearance in this BRZ 